Hello and welcome to the Disenfranchised Podcast, where that podcast is all about those franchises of one, those films that fancy themselves full-fledged franchises before falling flat on their face after the first film. I am your host, Stephen Foxworthy. Joining me, as always, the man who will always buy that for a dollar, it's my co-host, Brett Wright. Hey, Brett. Hello, Stephen. How are we doing tonight, buddy? Doing all right, man. Recovering from a illness. Yeah, we we heard all about that. It made you go a little crazy, didn't it? A little bit, maybe a little bit, maybe a little, maybe a little I bit. Want, I don't want to talk about it. As as long as as long as it, you didn't it, you didn't end up like those people in Iowa, then I think we're okay. No, uh, no, no, I, I prefer to avoid Iowa at all costs. I mean, you and me both. Although next year it will be unavoidable. Anyway, also joining us. It is, uh, well, look, it's the man who can never forget that time that RoboCop shot that dude in the dick. It's our other co-host, Tucker. Hey, Tucker. Hey, um, you know, I was in Pennsylvania. And the original Crazies takes place in Pennsylvania. Well, yeah. So what's wrong with you? <laughs> As he stops to hack his lungs out. <laughs> I was trying not to cough. <laughs> That's what all that was. I just wanted to fill the time and Trying then wait and for failed. you to talk so that I could cough, and I failed. You did. I failed horribly. Miserably. The lesson yeah. is, never try. But I was in Pennsylvania this week, briefly, for a few hours. Layover? Yeah, and it sucked, because like, I had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning, get on a plane at 8 o'clock. That's a bitch, and man. And then... I got to Pennsylvania and it was like nine o'clock and my other flight didn't leave until like one thirty. You can't even get like a cheesesteak at that hour. Although if you waited long enough, you probably could have, but yeah. Hey man, uh, everything opens up at like nine, nine thirty. So I was sitting in Doesn't the bar at like nine fifteen having a Stella. Hell yeah. Cause and your boy don't play when he travels. How am I going to have a cheesesteak, Steven? Explain that to me. Just say, I would like a cheesesteak, and then they give you a fucking cheesesteak, because it's Philadelphia. No, dude. No, dude. Unless that airport sucks. No, dude. Man, you know I can't eat a cheesesteak, because it's got steak in it. Oh, if that's I right. You're that, one of I would be <laughs> ill. You're one of them vegetarians. Look, I was bitten by a vegetarian about a decade ago, <laughs> and I turned. I don't know what to tell you. Look, you're telling me at an airport they wouldn't be able to make you a vegetarian cheesesteak? Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you that. You would think that there would be more vegetarian, more coughs, <laughs> vegetarian <laughs> options, uh, but there aren't. In fact, coming to Indy, I was at the Boston, the Logan, the, the Logan Airport in Boston. Right. Been there. Nice and airport. And I wanted to get some food, some lunch, and there were three different places that advertised a plant-based burger, which mm -hmm. is what I wanted. I didn't really want pizza. I wasn't in the mood for pizza. I thought about it. In fact, I texted Steven about it because uh, there was a Wolfgang Puck place. Yes, that was that, was that was what that was about. Okay, yes. If and it was the, not... The text was, if Wolfgang Puck were to make a pizza, would I want to eat it? Yeah. To which I said, absolutely, but yeah. So, and I wanted to, and surprisingly, it wasn't that bad. Um I, mean, I believe it was it. like it was like mid f for an airport I mean, for how yeah. much it costs, I, and that's that's always the balance at an airport. And with something like Wolfgang Puck, it's going to cost way more than it's probably worth because of well, the and name. it was like it was like fifteen bucks a slice. Mm -hmm. But I'm sorry for a slice. A, yes. yes, I mean it's a big slice, but it's hear a me out. Wolfgang Puck B airport. The reason there you go. The reason right. I say it's mid. Is because one of the place I was places I was going to get a burger wanted twenty five dollars for a damn burger. Mm -hmm. So those East Coast elites. I went to this little kiosk place and I put my order in and I crashed the system and so I tried on the other one and I crashed it again and then damn. when they finally rebooted the option just wasn't there. Oh fuck! So like they didn't really didn't want me to have it. So then finally I sat down at the Sam Adams restaurant. So I was like, oh, cool. It's a Sam Adams restaurant. They probably got all the shit on tap. And they did. And I was going to get a beer and 
some mozzarella sticks. And the Boston you know, Brick Red is my favorite beer to get in Boston because it's only available on tap and only in the city of Boston. And I fucking love it. It's a multi red delicious thing. Sorry. They had continue. that. But anyway, um, so I was giving the guy my order and I was like, let me get that impossible burger, dude. And he was like, yeah, we're out of that. Bitch. I was like, oh, uh, well, I guess you I just bitch. wasted everybody's time, including my own. <laughs> got my ass up and found the cheapest slice of pizza there was and got two of them and very mm-hmm. grumpily ate them. That's the move. So, yeah, plant based options. Move. And I did look at a few places, uh, Brett, to to kind of, uh, you know, sort of I don't want it to seem like I didn't want a cheesecake. Cheese, cheesecake, cheesesteak. I mean, look, cheesecake. I also always good. want a cheesecake. Yeah. Right? Who doesn't? Yeah. Cheesecakes well, are great. And and look, in in my omnivore times, in the before times, in the long long ago, your boy loved himself a cheesesteak. Sure. Would you like if I were to like marinate some mushrooms and like cut them up and like fry them up and put cheese over them as kind of a pseudo cheesesteak? Would that be a decent substitute, or would you want something more? You know, that does sound good, and I would want to try that, but there also are um, plant-based steak strip options. Okay. Like from like vegetarian the, steakums? Yes, like from some of the, the better companies that are known for the accuracy and taste. I've just never gotten them just simply because I don't know what I'd put them in, and mm-hmm. like I normally don't have all of the other ingredients that I need for a cheesesteak. Like I'm not regularly buying hoagie buns and provolone cheese. Well, you got to Yeah. You got to plan ahead for that shit. I'm just, I don't know. I've just never put forth the effort. I could do it easily, sure. but then like, I'd have to buy a pack of six buns and a whole thing of the steak. And like, who knows how long it would last. So I'd have to eat them like all in one week. Like I do when I make vegetarian chili dogs, you got to eat it all up, man. It's like mm-hmm. two hot dogs a night for like three nights. <sighs> it's exhausting. It's Just good. On Damn good. Though, man. Saves money that way. Damn good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But hey, you know what? We're here to talk about something other than plant-based cheese sticks. Are we though? I mm, that's a good point. Yeah, I guess we are. No, we are. We totally <laughs> no, are. oh, oh, I, we are. I really oh, like are. this movie. I like it a lot. Yeah. That's true. So, so Tucker, what movie are we? We we basically gone from a whole month of remakes, and we're we're closing out our month of remakes to talk about another remake tucker what remake are we talking about this week we're talking about 2014's robo cop yes in anticipation of the release of robo cop rogue city we are talking about jose padilla padilla's sorry Pad- jose i'm so sorry jose padilla's robo cop from 2014 uh, written by Josh Zatumer, Ed Newmeyer, and Michael Miner, and starring Joel Kinnaman, Gary Oldman, Michael Keaton, Abby Cornish, Jackie Earl Haley, Michael Kenneth Williams the Third. God, I love that man. Uh, Jennifer L. or Ellie L. A. Again, sorry, Jennifer J. Baruchel, Marianne Jean Baptiste, Samuel L. Jackson, Amy Garcia, and Zach Grenier. What a cast, gentlemen. What a picture. Yeah, dude, it's really good. This cast is kind of insane. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah it's dude. it's stacked to the extreme. Now, this is for I mean, this is a this is a fallow period for a couple of these people, but uh yeah, no, it's a good cast. Way into it. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Well, Look, RoboCop. What do we think about RoboCop? What are your opinions, gentlemen, about the RoboCop? Brett, what is your history with RoboCop as a movie, a franchise? What's your history with this film in particular? Lay it on me, man. Tell me about you and the RoboCop. Zero, zilch, nada. Um, I did For not real? Grow- this is the first yeah. RoboCop movie you've ever seen? Oh, no. No, no. Don't get it twisted. I've seen the original RoboCop, but like, okay. I don't okay. care about it. I don't care. I don't oh. have any ref reverence for it like other people do. Oh, um, oh I, just, Brett. I mean, it's fine. Yeah, but you still think it's pretty good, though, right? Like, you I mean, don't it's hate all right. it. It's all right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't I hate mean, it. It's, yeah, it's all right. Fair. Like, you dig it. That's cool. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to love it. No, I certainly don't. Um, 
I mean, if anything, I probably hold the opinion that it's overrated, but like, I, oh, okay. I mean, I don't know. I just did look. It's when's one the, of those... Okay. When's the last time you watched it, though? In 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 total fairness, when's the last time you actually watched it? I mean, fuck, man. I don't know. It's been years. <laughs> It's like, why am I going to watch a movie that I think is not that great again? I already have trouble rewatching movies I do like. So I mean, sometimes, I, and, and uh, first of all, I get it. I do. Sometimes, though, if I hear enough people sharing an opinion about a movie that I dislike, I'm kind of curious to rewatch it so I can see if maybe I'm wrong. Because, look, I've been wrong before, will be wrong again. But, like, I'm just like, could I have missed something in that? first watch like well sure and it, i'm not usually like that at all but okay um the, i mean the reverence for robocop is just kind of so ubiquitous that like i wouldn't i have even less of an incentive to listen to that like you know everybody says they love it it's like nirvana um everybody loves nirvana says they're the greatest thing that ever happened to music i mean look I, with the lights out they do look pretty dangerous I I don't like them at all and think they're absolutely overrated. Well, that's uh, pretty stupid and contagious. Probably a lot of people would agree with you. Um, <laughs> Sorry, no. I'm I think I think that on. your thoughts are are valid, Brett. I understand sure. what you mean, but I would I would urge you at some point to rewatch the original because I do think it's something that. That particularly would i would say if you've not seen the director's cut because the director's cut is almost a completely different movie uh, is it though maybe i haven't seen it enough i've watched i've had the blu-ray of the director's cut for a while but i've only watched it maybe three times that's the version and i've I seen own, the theatrical I, cut a bunch will, of times i will stand by the director's cut of robocop okay i have the criterion dvd of that i need to get the arrow blu-ray but for the longest time, the Criterion DVD was the only way to watch the director's cut of RoboCop. And I think to date, it is it is definitely the version I've seen the most. Yeah, uh, it was released by... Um, uh, Criterion? No. No, 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 no. The company that made the film, was that... MGM? It was. Uh, the one I have is just MGM. It's Steelbook. Oh, okay. It contains the director. What does it? Let's. You know what? Let's let's go over to 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 uh, Tukey's Blu-ray corner. Let, let me snatch that real quick. <laughs> Look, we are we are physical media apologists on this show. We do love us some physical media, and so we are collectors and dare we say connoisseurs of physical media that is a beautiful yeah. looking steel book i will say tucker's that, collector's that, edition collection yeah tucker's collection edition collectors corner uh this is this says directed by paul fearhoven robocop unrated director's cut on the back we have little mr i can't fuck with stairs and 209 there. yeah love that guy Stairs one of do my, not one, compute. One of my very best friends, Ed two oh nine. And then there's just this. So I don't know. I don't know what the special features are. I might. You know what? I might pop it in at some point later, mm -hmm. and then amend the show notes okay. with what's on this. Right. On. Because I know there's. I remember that there's stuff on this. I doubt it's the same. Maybe it's the same as the Criterion. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, 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 again, I love my old school Criterion discs. I've got a few of them. I've got the original Silence of the Lambs release. I've got the Robocop release. I've got Armageddon, the third man. Like, I love collecting old out of print Criterions. It's like a thing. But I think my um, only out of print one is uh, the man, uh, the man who fell to earth. Oh, yeah. The Nicholas Rowe, have... uh, David Bowie film. I have the complete thing too. I have the DVD two disc set. Oh, nice! And it came with the novel, like it was a box set with the novel from Criterion. The, so I have the novel too. I have the complete Mister Arcaden from Car Criterion, and it also comes with a novel. That's so rad. Of like Mister Arcaden short stories credited to Orson Welles, but probably ghostwritten by someone else. It's great. That's literally why I bought that movie. Like mm -hmm. I was probably at Sam Goody or something. And Hell I was yeah. like, wait, what is this movie? And why does it come with the book? Yeah. And I just bought it. <laughs> yeah. 
That's the that's move, what you had dude. to do back in the day. Like you didn't have the internet, you know, you couldn't like look at movie reviews, you couldn't look shit up. Like while you're standing there at the store, you couldn't take your phone out of your pocket and look shit up. Right. No, dude. This was like no. 1997, dude. Like- I get it, man. <laughs> I, I I remember 1997. I'm old enough that I recall. Um, Tucker, what's your history with the RoboCop? Well, the RoboCops, I always liked the RoboCops uh, because uh, I would see it on television, particularly on USA, the USA Network, like Mm, mm -hmm. extremely, extremely edited. I've heard characters are welcome on the USA Network. They are, indeed. Uh, You know, they used to show Dawn of the Dead uncut at midnight. Really? Like once a month. Yeah, something that cable channels do, because since cable channels um, are pay channels, Mm -hmm. they don't have to abide by FCC regulations at all. None of them do. So a lot of cable channels back in the day at night would show uncensored content really late at night. Like uh, Comedy Central used to show the South Park movie completely uncensored. I remember they did all the time in the 90s. Not another teen movie uncensored, except they actually did censor all the nudity, which was like half the reason I was watching. So what the hell? Understandable. But yeah, uh, so but I saw a very neutered version of it, but I still loved it. I was probably early teens. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I, I was able to see it. I got it from the library, I think a VHS copy. And I thought that was rad. And then I had the DVD for a number of years. And then I bought this steel book. It's something that I'd say I probably watch about three times a decade. Nice. On my own. Like if, if I'm in proximity of someone who I'm showing things to, like when I live with Jimmy, I show him shit constantly. I don't doubt that even a little bit. And it's great. I I love having someone to like show my favorite stuff to. Just yeah. like you guys too. Like I said, that's what my that's what my fifth Thursday is. That's me just like trying to share some really cool stuff with you guys, you know. Because so, that's I love why doing that. that. That's why we give you the time, man. That's why we give you the time. Yeah, so I watch it probably about three times a decade, and uh I I think that it's a five star film, the original. I agree. I'm, I'm I won't I'm I won't say that it's perfect, you. but it's damn near close. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the more I read really about cool. it, the more I like it. Yeah. Which is why when this remake came out, I did not expect anything from it. Because this was a time, 2013, for the last decade, it started with horror movies and then TV shows. Mm-hmm. And then everything else followed. The remake train just started rolling forward. This yeah, motherfucker just, came out, and I'm like, great, fucking RoboCop, perfect. Yeah, the, the creative bankruptcy fucking... of Hollywood on display for all to see. But honestly, to be fair, it has given us a reason to do this podcast. So, uh, so say when that, it what came you out, when it came out, I was given a digital code for it because my current roommate uh, was working at as a manager at Family Video, hmm. and so when she would get the blu-rays and the dvds she would give me the digital codes which is why there's so much random shit on my voodoo there is a lot of random shit on your voodoo and i appreciate that about you shit that i don't even like but one day i'll be drunk (laughs) enough to watch it and like have a great time you know like the easter dog i'll be like it's time (laughs) one day I have a feeling you're going to be really drunk to watch the Easter talk. (laughs) yeah it's gonna happen one day though i know i'll be there man might be rock bottom but i'll watch it Look, it's going to happen. Look for that it's episode coming happen. in April. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Though I would Excuse watch me, it for sir. this pod, for sure. I we definitely need to get, would. We need to get Hop out of the way first. Hop <laughs> is a priority. I have that, too. There you go. Randomly. Randomly. Um, I was going to so, say, the yeah. one you absolutely need to watch, though, because you would fucking love it, is Friends of Eddie Coyle. Dude, I'm gonna, man. I'm gonna this so l- hard. Like Tucker, real, real this soon. life is hard, but it's even harder when you're stupid. Look, Look, it's never been higher on my priority list. As far as films go, I almost watched it the other night, but then mm. I, I just got that Blu-ray of Out of Sight. and Oh, yeah, you did I get that Out of Sight Blu-ray. Love Out of Sight, dude. That's such a, it's just a... Michael Keaton reprising his role as Ray uh, Nicolette. I don't know, it's a high-stakes movie, but at the same time, it's such it's just such a fun and kind of 
wholesome movie. Well, I mean, it's Elmore Leonard. Know. You got to love I that. Love you got to appreciate it. that. I love it. But yeah, so I just, I got it and I've got a backlog of stuff that I've purchased and I need to watch. And my rule has always been when you buy it, you fucking watch it because why the fuck did you buy it? So I'm trying to. So that to, I can watch it when I want to. That's, that's no, my answer to that question. You got to make sure that you at least watch it when you get it. I think just to kind of reset the clock on it, just to make it worth the purchase. But I've still got the trial following. I haven't watched mm. um, fucking La Bamba, all criterion releases that I've gotten in like the last two or three months. Para that are just la, la Bamba. Sitting there in a pile on top of my DVD player. Okay. And uh, yeah, I've had some time and I watched out of sight. Um, and I should have watched Friends of Eddie Coyle. But anyway, um, I got this just randomly as a digital code. Mm. And I didn't have any expectations for it. I love the original. And finally, I sat down and watched it one day just out of curiosity. And gosh, you guys, it's <laughs> it's so darn good. It's so gosh darn fucking good. Yeah, you really like so this much. one. You were you were I praising this one this while movie. you were watching it before Brett and I had even gotten a chance this to watch is, it. I think this is the movie up there, like with the crazies, and to a certain extent, uh, Last House on the Left and Hills Have Eyes. Just examples of how you do a remake. Mm. That's how you do it. If you're not doing it this way, then why are you fucking doing it at all, Gus mm. Van Sant? I'm looking at you, Psycho. Like, come on! It's on man. our it's on our list. Maybe next maybe next October we cover that one. Maybe we we'll just do at non you. Romero remakes. I'm looking at you, Dawn of the Dead. I love you, but you're not Dawn of the Dead. Mm. Like, change the name to Dead of of Dawn humans zombies. I don't know. Dead, dead, dead at sunrise. Uh, yes. Dead by yes. dawn. Well, but then that would be an Evil Dead reference. That's true, that's true, that's true. And also, I think there have been a few films called that anyway. Evil Dead 2, I think, is subtitled Dead by Dawn in some some markets. In all the markets, dude. But anyway, yeah, I think this is a really good example of how you do a remake really, really well. And that's my history with the Robocops. I don't like the sequels. Uh, It's set Paul Weller's in 2, the TV show, the cartoon was cool when I was a kid. Uh, the Prime Directive TV show is pretty cool for what it is. Actually, I urge you guys to watch it. But yeah, I love this remake. Steven, go with your history. Uh, I bought the Criterion DVD at a disc replay in Greenwood, Indiana. In good old uh, disc replay. Yeah, man. Uh, I would I would scour disc. I would spend upwards of half an hour, 45 minutes in disc replay, just scouring for any criterions I could find. Cause Girl, you can usually get them really fucking cheap there. Uh, and I found the criterion of RoboCop and I was like, Oh my God, this is on my list. So I grabbed it and I bought it and I took it home and, and watched it pretty, pretty immediately and uh, really enjoyed it. And I have uh, rarely revisited it since maybe once or twice since, um, I was going to watch it this week in advance, but I got uh, distracted by life things. So I did not get a chance to rewatch it for this episode, but I think I want to watch the rest of the RoboCop franchise sometime between now and the end of November. You got to watch that TV show, man. I mean, Do it's, I, it's, it's late 90s um, syndicated action television but for what it is it's kind of impressive it's not great television but like i say for what it is it's worth looking at a few of them and they're all movies basically they're all hour and a half episodes so there's like three of them in a season kind of like sherlock okay i can dig um but yeah check a couple of them out maybe look to see which are the highest rated and check a couple out because it's definitely worth looking at oh gosh is it that's I mean, that's a, that's my question. Oh, it might be on YouTube even. Uh, let's see if it's streaming anywhere, like legitimately. Um, RoboCop Prime Directives. It's on Tubi. It's on Tubi, of course. It's on Tubi. God Damn bless right, Tubi. It's on Tubi. God 
bless Tubi. Can I just say that? Can I say that? I wish you would. You have multiple times. God bless Tubi. I love Tubi. Um, and RoboCop the series from the 90s. I don't know if you guys remember that. It's akin to The Flash from the 90s oh, I, and its production values. I don't values. remember that at all. I don't remember that at all at all. Guys. Yeah, dude. It was airing around the same time the cartoon was. Like, RoboCop 3 was coming out, you know. I do remember the cartoon. Should we cover RoboCop 3 on the on the Patreon this month for Unenfranchised? Uh, Call up our I've... buddy Brian Kuyper. Look, I would, but I would want to do like a, a deep dive on like the the whole shit show that was the making of it, including like maybe seeing if we could dip into the comic that was made from Frank Miller's original screenplay. Look, I am all about reading the comic. You you know how I love comics, so yeah, Stephen's comic book corner. But yeah, yeah, how many corners does this fucking room have? But yeah. I don't know. I'm just saying I'd be into that, but let's let's ban meeting about that via group chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not on. the time or the place for that conversation. But thank you for bringing that idea because now we have the idea. Yeah, and look, as with all Fred Decker movies, uh, we we got to get our buddy Brian Kuyper in on that episode. So yeah, right on. So patrons, maybe that's coming this month. Who knows? Maybe. Not me. Um, but yeah, like fucking RoboCop. We're we're talking about a robotic cop. Like that's that's a pretty cool idea. It's pretty rad. It's pretty rad. You were talking about your history with the film, Stephen. You didn't mention your history with the remake. Uh this is the first time I've seen it. I saw it for the first time for this episode. I, I saw the trailer for it in twenty fourteen. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm glad that Michael Keaton's getting work. Like I haven't seen him in a while. And then later that year he was in one of my favorite films of the 20th uh 21st century so far birdman birdman i i i like birdman i know a lot of people hate birdman i what who hates birdman show me one person who hates birdman people hate birdman man people don't like it i love birdman i thought i saw birdman in the theater and it blew me away the day it came out on blu-ray i bought the fucking blu-ray like i loves me some blue uh some birdman whoo Dude, but yeah, me too. girl, me too. Me too. Bert, mm. Brett, have you ever seen Birdman? <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Look, you're are you a fan of the '89 Batman? You're a fan of Michael Keaton as Batman in general? Yeah. Um, uh, it's kind of a, it's a very much a meta commentary on that. Yeah, like a deconstruction of like him as an actor and how like a success in something like that has affected him yeah and it's really really interesting and i it would is. recommend it to you you may not love it but i think you're at least gonna like it it's it's michael keaton it's edward norton it's naomi emma watts stone. emma stone andrea riceboro uh zach galifianakis it's got a everybody's in it really fucking solid cast <laughs> it's really cool. um and it it's good, man. It's just and Michael really Keaton's good. always a win. Name one time where Michael Keaton is not a win outside of White Noise. Jack Frost. Multiplicity. I mean, but Jack Frost for the lulls, though. Jack Frost. Do you know the story of Jack behind Jack Frost? Do you know who was originally supposed to be Jack Frost? <laughs> who was it, Steven? If you look, if you look at a picture of Jack Frost. And I tell you this name, you'll absolutely see it because it didn't have Is time it to Jason read. Jason Alexander? No, it's fucking George Clooney was supposed to be Jack Frost. Really? And they designed the that. snowman to look like George Clooney. Does he though? He, I don't he, look at look at look at Jack Frost. Oh, I've looked at Jack Frost. Okay. No, look I at him. I enjoy Jack at, Frost for the lulls. So look, I assure you, Tucker, I've seen that film multiple times. Look again. Um, but no, they designed it like George Clooney and then Clooney dropped out of the project. I think because it was so close to Batman forever, he kind of like pulled out of all like family shit and, uh, they, they got Keaton cause Keaton, Keaton spends a good guy. (laughs) Keaton spends a good time in like (laughs) actor jail. I guess I can't really think of any other way to put it. No, he's never really down and out like he's always there's always an undercurrent of keaton like he has his peaks but he's always there but like he he has this really like miracle run through the late 80s early 90s like he is he's one of the guys like it's 
particularly I, I would say starting with probably Beetlejuice. Like he's on the Ascension, Johnny Dangerously, Gung Ho. Say, yeah, and you're doing like Mr. Mom and stuff. Like she's he's having a baby, stuff. Mr. Mom. He's, yeah, he he's is. He's a leading man before he, he gets Beetlejuice. But he's, a, I mean, he's largely a comedy guy. He gets Beetlejuice, and that kind of takes him to another level. Then he gets Batman, and that takes him further up still. He's like on top of the world. And then he gets nuts. And then you want to get nuts? <laughs> Let's get nuts. He's in Let's Batman Returns in 92. He also is the oh, English voice of Porco Rosso in 92 yeah. as well, which I <laughs> that is one of my favorite Your Miyazaki jam. films and maybe my favorite film of 1992. I love Porco Rosso. Wow. Porco Rosso rules. That's a huge statement. Continue. It is. Uh, he's in Much Ado About Nothing in 93. Uh, Multiplicity in 96. Inventing the Abbots. He's the narrator. Jackie Brown in 97, yes. Desperate, and then Desperate Measures in 98. Feels like he's on the way out. He follows that up with Out of Sight, the previously mentioned Out of Sight. Yeah, dude, Out of Sight. One scene. He has one scene. You guys, he has one scene sight, playing the it. same playing the same because, character he played in Jackie Brown. Because here's the deal. Like, he's trying to date Jennifer Lopez. And Look, like, who's not? Who's not trying to date Jennifer Lopez? She's a... Uh, uh, um, a Texas Ranger and he's a federal agent and her dad played by um Dennis uh, Far uh Dennis, Dennis Franz? Uh no Farina? Dude. Yeah, there you go. I love Dennis Farina. God that man. Oh, so, I love Dennis Farina. So it's him and Michael Keaton having an awkward conversation about cop stuff. That's amazing. And it's, I love it's that. wonderful. Stuff. That, if you've not seen Out of Sight, I like, haven't get seen Out ass, of Sight. Get thee to a DVD or and watch <laughs> that movie right now. Um, after Out of Sight, so the same year he does Desperate Measures with Andy Garcia, Out of Sight, oh yeah, and Jack Frost. All that in the same year. Fuck it, a yeah, it's a good year. And for then Danny. and and then he kind of disappears. He does a shot at glory in two thousand. The only thing he does in 2001 is an episode of The Simpsons. The only thing he does in 2002 is a TV movie called Life from Baghdad and an episode of Frasier. I didn't realize that he had been kind of out of it for a while there. I like no he kind of drops off after after that's 90 wild. after 97. Like that's why I said Jackie Brown is kind of the end of his run. Um, and then like. he like he kind of disappears and I'm not entirely sure why. First Daughter in 2004, White Noise in 2005. That movie uh, sucked, you guys. Have you seen White Noise? I Show of hands, who's seen White Noise? Not me. Oh, Just don't, you. you don't, nope. It's And you know what? That well, movie now will I go down to. in history. It will go down in history as being the worst film to ever have an amazing trailer. Mm. Boy, I went to the theater to see that because it looks so fucking good. That trailer. Nathan got- Fillion's I- in the sequel, I think. Yeah, Nathan he is. Nathan Fillion is, is in the sequel. Direct to video, and I've heard it's better. Sure. Uh, he's also in future episode of this podcast, Herbie Fully Loaded in 2005. Uh, he's in Cars Bruce in 2006. In yeah. Um, And then he just kind of like kicks around a little bit. He's the voice of Ken in Toy Story 3 in 2010. He's the the police captain in the future episode of this podcast, The Other Guys. Oh yeah, um, you like guys he, love that movie. I I'm okay with it. Like I don't I'm thinking love it, of, but it's I'm all thinking right. of the nice the nice You're thinking guys. of the nice guys. That's a yeah, different thing. I get those mixed up. You're nice talking guys, about the Will I do Ferrell, love. Mark Wahlberg movie. That's the yes, the Adam McKay. And film, Eva Mendez is, is somehow Will Ferrell's wife. Sure. Somehow. Yeah. Why not? Um and that's the whole joke of the whole movie. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, so he kind of languishes between 98 and 2014 and 2014. He has his comeback. He does RoboCop. He does future episode of this podcast need for speed, which I know Brett is kind of itching to cover. And he does. I see it. I've heard it's bad. And then he does the founder. And that was really good too. Yeah, it's, I mean, look, need for speed is a video game movie. But I don't like racing games. I like, well, I, need but, for but speed. I know you I like at- hot pursuit. I like playing as the cops. Look, it's whenever the next Fast and Furious movie comes out, we will either cover Need for Speed oh, or Hobbs v. Shaw. 
That's Ooh, what we'll cover. No, whenever... I don't want. To... Please don't make me do Hobbs v Shaw. Look, yeah. at Can some point, speed, please. At well, some sure, point, we're gonna have to do Hobbs v Shaw. I'm saying I don't want to do it. I'm just saying I'm not excited about it. That's all. Um, and, and, and after that, he's back. Like he, he gets Oscar nominated for Birdman. And so after that, he's got, he, he does a voice of one of the villains in Minions. Uh, he's in Spotlight, which he also, I think gets Oscar nominated for the founder Spider-Man Homecoming, like Dumbo. After that, he's back. Mm -hmm. Like he's doing shit again. Uh, Trial of the Chicago seven, like he, he returns as Batman in the flash future episode of this podcast. Like, I can't wait. We're like, like Michael Keaton fully comes back and Birdman is largely the reason. You think that's his comeback? I think so too. It is. I didn't realize when I, when I made my initial statement, I didn't realize that he had kind of dropped off there for a few years. He, I mean, it more than a few years, like it was the better part of a decade. Yeah. That he was kind of out of the, out of the public eye. Like that's weird. And there was a time when I would have considered Michael Keaton one of my favorite actors. In fact, I, I think he's incredible. I think he should have won the Oscar in 2014. He's really great. He's really good in this, too, especially in the scenes when him and Gary Oldman are bouncing off each other, I think. Are, are that, really, really I think that fantastic. those are some of the most electric scenes in the movie. Mm. Definitely not when it's him and Joel Kinnaman, because Joel Kinnaman, <laughs> look, I, I will say Joel Kinnaman is perfectly cast in this movie. Yeah, um, because yeah. of how robotic and wooden he tends to be. He's as an just actor. a dude. He's just a fucking dude. He and that's why I think it works for this movie. He's just a fucking dude. Like, there's nothing special about him. He's just. It a, definitely works better here than a, it does in something whatever. like the Suicide Squad. Oh sure. yeah, yeah. Like, like bless his heart for trying, and like we love him, but like right. Like this the is stuff more that, his shit. Like he's the stuff he's asked to deliver in the first Suicide Squad movie is just oh, untenable. That's a lot. Yeah, that that dialogue is untenable, mm. and yeah. the fact that he is saddled with so much exposition and just plays you know the very boring regular everyman is yeah. really doesn't do him any favors. And and like this is his first leading role in a movie, but this was very much at the time when Hollywood is trying to make Joel Kinnaman happen. And he is just one of those very bland everyman actors who kind of looks like every other actor of his he generation. Looks like every dude. Like he has like, the most like, like standard face and features yes, and yes. body type. And like, I say, I love it. I love it for this role. I think it's perfect, especially the way that it's written. Mm-hmm. Play the role is written in this movie. He's pitch perfect. Nobody the else. The platonic done it. ideal of a Hollywood leading man is what Joel Kinnaman is, and it's like <laughs> it's like him, Charlie Hunnam, Jai Courtney, like all these yeah. guys that they try to make leading men in Hollywood, and it just for some reason it just mm-hmm. doesn't connect. They can't. And they don't is, always crack the code. Code no, and and but but he is very much one of those guys, and he has had so many at bats like leading movies and it it feels like it almost always falls flat i think james yeah. gunn kind of helped him a lot in the suicide squad yeah i thought he was good in that it was definitely like kind of a redemption not only for his character but for him as an him actor as yeah. an actor yeah I agreed 100 percent. brett thoughts on joel kinnaman I had no idea who the guy was before. Now you just made me realize. Oh, he was in the Suicide Squad. That's that's him. Okay, cool. Yeah, dude, that's him. Yeah, right on. Neat. That's that guy. But that's no, that, he's a Swedish actor, and he's in like. So I looked at his IMDb profile, and he is in a ton of movies. Um, there, I I don't know if there's. I think there might be Swedish films. Um, but he is in a ton of these G- Johan Falk films. Um, that I, I'm assuming are Swedish made for TV or direct to video movies. Uh, he is in so many of these movies um, just as like one of the guys, his first American film looks like uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo, the David Fincher film future episode of this podcast, girl with the dragon tattoo. Um, but he's also like his big break was in easy money, which is a Swedish film. There are a couple of sequels to that. Um, he's in this Johan Falk franchise that I did not even know until now was a franchise. He's in the Swedish show, the killing, which I've heard is amazing. 
Uh, I have not watched it, but I've heard it is very good. But this is his first American like leading role. Uh, leading up to this, he does Girl with the Dragon Tattoo in 2011, along with The Darkest Hour, also in 2011, and Safe House in 2012. And then after that, it's a lot of Swedish stuff, mostly Johan Falk stuff, and a couple of Easy Money sequels, and then he lands RoboCop. Um, nice. He's also in the Terrence Malick film Night of Cups, and then he's in Child 44 and The Suicide Squad in 2015 and 2016, respectively. And uh, yeah, it, it feels like he's one of those guys that Hollywood really wanted to try to like push and he just never really connected. Never found the right project or never found the right project that found the right audience. Right. Never found the right role that connected him to, to kind of a larger thing. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he's bad, like, but he is mm-hmm. very, the stuff that I've seen him in, which is to say the suicide squad films and this he feels very stilted, very wooden. And so it feels like he's kind of the right guy for something like this, where that definitely assists, that definitely helps him. Mm-hmm. I think it's perfect. Now, he's but no I Peter will, Weller, but no, he does but a I decent will job. say he those transitions only work because he makes them work like the transition from when like he's they're turning like when he first comes back and he's all disoriented and he finally right. agrees to do the thing and then he comes back and he's talking to his partner and he's being real cool and stuff and they turn down his empathy all the way and he's like very robotic and then eventually he gets it back up and he comes back none of that would have worked without just those subtle changes in his movements like his his the way he talked i'm just really blown away by him in this movie i i think he's i think he's doing okay but again i i can't help but com- constantly compare him to peter weller and who doesn't fall short when compared to peter weller you know well it's a different it's a different kind of performance because it's a different kind of character like this is a perfect mm-hmm. remake because it, it takes the source material and it updates it, obviously, visually and mm-hmm. and with the writing and with the pacing and everything, updates it. But not only that, but it puts kind of its own spin on it, which is right. that the original is a social satire. Yeah. It's it's Verhoven. It's fucking satire. And listen, right. Everybody no one listen does, to me right now. Starship no does, Troopers is a satire. And if you don't no think it is. No one does dark satire you're quite, like, quite like Paul Verhoeven. Yes, but this movie is not a satire. It is a straightforward commentary. Yeah. They're not, it's not. That's, that's what makes them so perfect because the original can always be better because it is. But this movie is still great because it does something different with that idea and does it really fucking well, in my opinion. And see, I, I'm, I, I go back and forth because there are moments where I thought the commentary seemed really, really, really good. And, and there sometimes are moments a little bit ahead of its time too. And there are At a lot a of times of where I thought it kind of fell flat. Like, I mean, blue or black lives matter starts the year before this. Like it, it kind of starts rolling in 2013. Mm -hmm. Um, so like black lives matter is kind of a thing, but the idea of police brutality continues and police overreach continues to be a theme, even into the modern day. Mm -hmm. And you've now got like movements like, um, Antifa and which is not, is a movement, not an organization. Let's be very clear on that. Um, and a cab, like, all cops are bastards because of course they are like Except these movements. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't know. Even kind of RoboCop. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I was going to say our cab. I was going to say our No, look, look in, in this movie, he does the thing that makes him not a bastard, which is he exposes all of the corruption. That's what makes every cop a bastard. Nobody, no matter how good they are of a cop, they're still part of an extremely corrupt system. And Robocop in this movie exposes that system. Starts to tear it down. 
he he does, but I don't think his job is done completely. Like the oh no, that's is... why we need a sequel. Give me sequels right now. <laughs> Brett, you said <laughs> RoboCop's still a bastard. What? Why? Why? Why do you say that? Well, because I mean, if we're including all cops, why are we not including RoboCop? No, I just told you why. I just told you why because he's like. But Serpico, I don't buy it. I don't man. buy it. I don't buy it. <laughs> he's like Serpico, dude. And you no. know why we don't have Serpico anymore? Because Serpico. The motherfucker got shot in the face. He did. In the motherfucking face, Brett. Just because he was trying to be a, a good cop and like fight corruption and shit. But no, corruption runs deep in that bitch. That's why nobody says anything now because you will fucking die. You will literally fucking die. Yes. And that's why Robocop is not a B because once he gets his empathy back, he takes care of shit. He solves his own murder. He exposes all of the corruption in the D- Detroit Police Department. How can he be a B? Except for the police chief. She, Wait, he, doesn't get, he, he doesn't get her to confess anything. He gets right. shut down before she confesses anything. Correct. Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying based on the the ending, like the news report at the ending, it seems like... Uh, well, it seems like we're getting a sequel to this movie, and we're yeah. definitely not getting a sequel to this movie. That's <laughs> why we're talking about it. I just want it so bad, though. I like, know I'm glad we're do. talking about it, but I wish we weren't. I'm right? No, I, in, I understand. Very indifferent. I'm very indifferent to the movie. I think, like, I just because uh, that's fair. Like it now, is. post 2019, you know, post, you know, the increase of uh eyes on black lives matter like just all of like the protests and the police killings and all that like i feel like the message of this movie is just like is too gray now half the time i'm like i was like i know i'm supposed to be rooting against like michael keaton's character but he's not right. giving me a reason to because um, he's michael until, keaton and i mean rules. until the end until and... the end yeah he does not giving me a reason to hate him until he gives me a reason to hate him. Um, <laughs> yes, exactly. which doesn't happen until like the last, I don't know, half hour. Maybe. I don't feel like Correct. that's out of the blue though. It builds up to it because he does some shady fucking shit. Some shady. Well, and his I mean, arguments in Congress shit. are pretty sound. Like and, his arguments he, to Congress are like. But also, I agree look, with. look. So even if he's like a super evil dude, because like even when he's making those straight up correct and some people would say arguments in Congress, he still knows that the police department is corrupt. He's got deals with all these people. He knows I was gonna the say, bad he's, guy. He's in on it because... He's in like, on all of that shit. Everything yeah, he bad knows how bad it is because he's he in, in on, on it. it. Right. So it's not like a heel turn at the end. The whole movie and is think, telling and you that this guy's that's... a fucking piece of shit. No matter how right he is, he's a piece of fucking shit. I mean, he's your I... stereotypical tech billionaire. He's your Mark yeah. Zuckerberg, your Elon Musk, your what have you. I Maybe don't think aged that's another very, 10 years or so. I just don't think yeah. that's very clear, you see. Because uh, I didn't know who I was supposed to be. Like I didn't know who the bad guy was until, really, till the end. When he yeah. becomes full bad guy. And I would I would say that is a weakness of this film. Because even Jackie O'Reilly's character, you're like, okay, he's just kind of a dick, but you know, after yeah. after the training exercise, maybe he respects him a little bit because he beat him in the training exercise. But now he just comes back as a straight up yeah. evil guy later. Correct. Um, yeah. Like, no, you're absolutely right. Like what? Where did this come from? Well, and this um, is something that Verhoeven was doing in the original, like the the evil of capitalism, the evil of the, this idea that machines can supplant humanity like that was kind of the whole concept of the original robocop well, sure. right even i remember that but like but, that's not that's nowhere in this movie at all no i agree and yeah. another thing that's missing is verhoven creates robocop as american jesus like there's a reason that robocop literally walks on water during the final act of that film and it's because for for paul verhoven who has done, I should mention, very extensive research on the historical Jesus, like the character of the historical Jesus, um, was has wanted for years to make a Jesus movie of his own. Um, like, he created RoboCop as the American Jesus. That was the whole genesis of the, the creation of that. He is a, a, a cop who has guns and protects the interests of, you know, the American 
the American people, as it were. Like, that's his idea of what Americans think Jesus is. Um, so that's why you have RoboCop fucking walking on water in the final act of that film. And I think this movie does absolutely nothing with that conceit whatsoever. Like, the idea of someone being killed and resurrected, that's that's a type of Christ, as, as we would call it, to step into Stephen's Christianity corner here for a second. Let's um, mosey on over for a second. Like, you know, just on a, a Robocop episode, no less. Uh, look, Didn't have this I'm, on my disenfranchised bingo card. <laughs> no, it tracks. But no, it but tracks. this is Verhoeven. Like, this is all Verhoeven's yeah. thing. Like, this is what he, this is his conception of Robocop. It was as American Jesus. So, like, his, like, his whole concept of, it, you know, the character, it's a man who dies and is resurrected. But because it happens in America, he's, he's hyper violent. He's a police officer um, and he is he's tasked with taking down corruption. The, the 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 twist at the end, which gets ignored in the subsequent sequels, is the fact that he retains his humanity, which I think is something this movie. I don't think does as well as the original, um, the idea that he is fully machine who becomes progressively more human over the course of the film. Alex Murphy in this film is more he's human from the get go. And then they can like move his humanity with like a dialer knob on the, on, on the, on the switchboard, like the, the far side cartoon where the, the tech like moves the band suck meter up. Now like I gotta, they can like play with his humanity a little gotta, bit by like lowering his dopamine levels and making him more compliant and more machine like. I feel like I feel like you're oversimplifying it, and I feel like that's another thing that builds up that that maybe since I've seen it a few more times, maybe I I have had a chance to sort of like soak in. But they do it to him multiple times. It's not just the dopamine thing; like they do it to him when they install the software that makes him think that he's making all the decisions and is about the thing that finally gets him approved. Do you remember when Gary Oldman's like, we, yeah, he, it's all AI. Like he's not doing it, but we're like making him think that he's doing it. Right. It basically, like it's, all the, part, the it's all part of the a software takes process. over. Yeah. It's all part but I of feel the like, process that gets to that point. I feel like that doesn't circle back. Like we don't revisit that again, which I feel like is a, is a flaw in this movie. Like we don't well, like that. That feels like a flag that's planted. That's going to come up and be really important later. And then it, doesn't i know i dis i disagree because i think that once he takes control back like that's resolved and i understand that it, it it goes a different way in the original but like i say this is this is not the original like the intentions are not the same and that's i think if they were it would be boring like i said i don't want to see another i don't want to see this again i want to sure. see this but different sure. and right. modern. So like, i don't I, so i feel like and maybe maybe this is what it is because i've been even after the movie was over i was sitting with it going like i don't why do i not like this movie what is missing and i couldn't put my finger on it and i just think it's because it's like it's it feels kind of half-baked because like when he does wrestle control back right that's it like they don't like, it's such a big deal that they have to fix him and make him less human. And then when he wrestles control back, they just sort of forget about it. Like, why? Why is that suddenly not so important to them anymore? Well, I feel like that they would have to do something completely different, which with the pacing of the film, did, did they do not have time to do. Because he's already figured out how to dial his empathy back up by himself. And shit, by the end of the movie, he's just ignoring his prime directives. Like, Alex Murphy is strong, man. Like, he can overpower this, you know, software and this AI. Like, I guess he's got a strong brain or a strong will, or I don't know what they're trying to convey there. But, well, that's like, the problem. We, it's I, no I can't tell. It's not, it's, it's either it's super subtle, and I just can't, wasn't picking up on it, mm -hmm. or you're, that's what we're supposed to read into it, and it wasn't intended but like it was just there's no i don't know maybe, maybe i don't know maybe that's just me maybe that's a new problem well, no, i don't know no i get yeah. it but i think in this movie it, it doesn't 
matter as much as it does in the original because I think this movie is is focused on some very different things than the original is. And I think that's why I think it was a good decision that they bring him back human and then he has to deal with his, you know, robotism, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and then, you know, he gets more robot and less robot and all that. I, I, I don't think it it's for the same purpose as it was in the original. I think this story is more about, you know, his humanity. And if he spends most of the movie without it, and that's what the movie focuses on, like, you're not going to have much to do there. Like, I, I get, I really do get why people are indifferent to this movie or maybe, you know, dislike it. But I don't, I don't think it's a bad movie. In fact, I think it's a pretty good movie. It's not as good as the original. Absolutely not. Like, it's well, at least a star and a half worse than the original. Spoilers. That's, that's the thing. Like, I, I don't think it's a bad movie either. I just like it. It, it definitely does fall into indifferent. Like, I don't think it's bad. Mm -hmm. I just, I, there's, I don't know. Maybe I'm not articulating it well because I feel like I'm not because I just can't put my finger on what I didn't like about it. I just, I can't. There's something missing, and I, I'm, I can't figure it out. I mean, for me, I feel like it could have done more. It comes at a point, I think in American filmmaking where it has an opportunity to say something about the modern state of policing and it comes right up to the line of saying it without actually saying it. Well, because it I think that that's a secondary, uh, a secondary concern of the screenplay. I think the, the what first would you say social the commentary, concern? I'm saying the primary social commentary concern of the screenplay is uh global politics when it comes to policing like the whole robocop thing is a means to an end and the end is to make it so the whole world is policed by omnicore like they're losing money just sure. because the united states is not letting well, then them put isn't their robots the primary everywhere. social commentary of this film then with that in mind isn't the primary social concern of this movie like unchecked capitalism Yes, it is. But I will also say I don't think that the social commentary is as big of a part of this movie as it was the original. I think, like I was saying while you were taking a whiz there, Stephen, that I think that this movie is more concerned with the characters and their relationships, which is why I think that Alex Murphy is Alex Murphy most of the time instead of like the original where he's he starts as a robot and gains his humanity back. Eventually. He's literally only Murphy in the final moments of the film. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, and I think that's, they, they did this differently in this movie for a reason because they wanted to concentrate more on the, the humanity of this, this guy who is just a face and a hand, dude. He's a face and a hand and a pair of lungs and some lungs. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Like, can you imagine that the body horror in this movie is like, I was it's so say, hard to sit through some, those scenes. This is yeah. some Holy like Cronen fuck. Cronenberg level body horror in this movie. And which it is, looks amazing. It looks really good. Oh like it, God. And like when he talks and like you can see his throat moving and mm -hmm. stuff. And, oh, ah. The thing that got me is as he's like coping, like as he after he's seen himself and after he's freaked out, Holy Christ, there's nothing left. Yeah. You can hear his lungs expanding and deflating. Yeah, dude, like yeah. it's this kind of like almost disgustingly wet, like it's so gross. It's so kind gross. of noise that he makes. And you can hear it in, oh, in the really? pauses in his speech. Yeah. And it happened. And literally they time it with every time he inhales and exhales as an actor. Like every time the actor inhales and exhales, they time that, that like, sound effect that's and some excellent sound design there i tell you what it's very it disturbing very it is appropriately disturbing i will say yeah. that a hundred and then the other scene where like they're working on his brain and he's like talking to him while he's doing it right i taste i taste picking around butter. his brain yes yeah, like oh my god ah, it's horrifying yeah. right i mean yeah there is some there is some honestly cronenberg level body horror in this movie that i yeah, really dude. did appreciate that, that Verhoeven really leaves out of the original, 
really the one thing from the original that I wanted to see in this movie that I sadly did not. Mm-hmm. That dude getting shot in the dick? I wanted someone <laughs> to get shot in the dick. And I wanted it to be Michael Keaton. I wanted Keaton to get shot in the dick. I like, would have, I, like, I honestly... thought for a second that's where they were going with it at the end, like as he's like slowly trying to raise the gun to like counteract his programming, I thought he was going to clip Keaton's dick. Like I thought that was where we were going. I wanted desperately to see RoboCop shoot someone in the nah, dick in this movie. No, nah, it was Jackie Earl, Earl Haley for me. That's who I wanted to see him shoot in the dick. That, that's just, the one. Cause he was the biggest dick. He was. And he should have got shot in the dick. I but no, someone, sure. no, but no, absolutely. Someone should have gotten shot in the dick in this movie. I don't, <laughs> I don't care if it was Haley or Keaton. Someone should have gotten shot in the dick in this movie. And they tried to or maybe it in other references. I don't know why they could have done that one. Right. Dead or Alive, You're Coming With Me is in this movie. Which I, I wouldn't thought was buy great. that for a dollar. Uh, like the I wouldn't buy that for a dollar was semi-forced, but it still worked. Yeah, but it was Dead or Alive, You're Coming With Me, oh my god. It, and it was a completely so different good. context from the yes, original. Which I, and it works. It worked. It works be, I, I think it worked it. because it was a different context from the yes. original. Because you're not trying to play off of the original. You're you're using a line, the, the iconic line from the original <clears throat> in such a way that it is, it, it's riffing on the the original intention of that line. So I think and that that boys work. Is how you do a remake. Look, we're an hour into this episode. Everybody Should knows we... the plot of RoboCop. Let's move on. Okay. All right. All Apparently, right. Tucker, <laughs> Tucker has decided we don't need to do the plot in 60 for this one. And you know what? I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, look, too, we're 158 yeah. episodes into this shit. If, if we're going to skip right. the... If we're gonna skip the plot and sexy on one, it should be this one. Look, Look, go go to Wikipedia and read it if you're really. He's 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 a cop and he's a robot cyborg guy. I told you this is gonna happen. We're eventually gonna stop doing it all together. Mark my words. No, 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 absolutely not. I was about to say I don't want to make this a regular thing, but it's fucking RoboCop. Like, come on, he's a robot. He's a cop. You can kind of imagine where it goes. I also want to shout out my man. My boy, my ride or die, the Is late Michael K. Williams, Michael K. Williams, the third. I fucking love that man. That's the I got one. So mm. excited when I saw him in this movie and he does next to nothing in it. And I was so pissed off about that. That's that's my half star off on this movie is that Michael K. Williams is just disgustingly underutilized. Like when he's there, he's great. But when is mm-hmm. he there? Not it, often. That's it. That's it. Like he's barely there. He's Lewis too. Like he's he's playing the Nancy Travis role from the original. Yeah. Or is it Nancy Travis? Am I no, I'm thinking of someone else. I'm sorry. Who who played oh, Steven's gonna it's, look it up? It's not Nancy Steven's Travis. It's, look a, it up. it's another Nancy. I don't remember I which Nancy. It's the one that used to be married to Brian De Palma. Steve um, about to look it up. I am. I'm trying to remember it, and I'm not going to. So I just speaking. To... Speaking of Nancy looking, Allen, um, it's Nancy Allen. I'm go. sorry. So I, I saw a, a TikTok the other day that somebody was pointing out that um, if she doesn't look at that dude's dick, we don't get RoboCop. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> she glances at the just glances real quick and sets everything into motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She sure does. That's the that's the rat in Endgame, right? Yeah. Like that. The, the, yeah. <laughs> if he doesn't walk across that control panel, then we don't have a movie. Yeah. We got other. We're stuck. Yeah. I, I actually saw that TikTok as well. I don't know if you sent it to me or if I saw it independently. I feel like you and I run in similar TikTok circles, Brett, but. Yeah. Well, I also know that if, you, if you're you friends with people, you, their stuff shows up on your for you page right. and vice versa. Yeah. So, Sorry about all the you... cooking videos, man. I mean, I, I love the cooking videos. That part of tiktok we're on the same side of uh, okay good <laughs> allow, allow me to apologize for the uh pro wrestling videos you probably get a lot of i you know i i really do it's it it's uncanny but thank you now i know why <laughs> you're welcome thanks buddy it's how i keep up with it because i don't watch it regularly fair enough man fair enough look i like some of the older ones where they're like recounting the stories from like the bygone years oh those are great those are my favorite ones to watch i i actually do watch some of those yeah yeah pretty good but yeah 
RoboCop, man. Fucking RoboCop. Yeah. What Robo if a robot cop. was also a cop? What if we had a cyborg cop? What if that? Okay. Half I'm man, gonna... half machine. Look. All cop. I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to do How's this. How's that not the tagline? Tag half, half, half robot, half cop. All RoboCop. I don't know. No, mine was better. <laughs> mine was better. Is he the modern man? Secret, secret. He's got a secret. Um, I don't want to ask this question, but I'm going to ask this question anyway because um, I'm morally bankrupt as a human being. Um, Who wins in a fight, RoboCop or the Terminator? It's interesting that you asked that question. Funny you asked that question, Stephen. We're going to move right on over to Brett's video game corner. Hell yeah! There was also a comic book series before. Yeah, game, actually, I there was a comic book series. Um, yeah, I think the game is based on the comic book series. If I'm it not is, mistaken, it is. just like uh, Alien I mean, if, versus Predator. Yeah. If we're going to move into the corner, you, man, there's so many RoboCop games. Oh, oh yeah. we'll get to that. Did, did Wait, are know? we going to do an Oops uh, Video Game Corner this I don't month? Know. We're gonna try. No, there's not. There's not that many. Okay, there's okay. a lot, but there's not that many. The arcade uh, game, the Genesis game, the new yeah, game. So, yes, there's well, RoboCop from 1988. That is in our beat 'em up, run and gun beat 'em up arcade game by Data East. Mm. Um, it's which is pretty game. much just an arcade version of the movie. Nice. Um, uh, then there's RoboCop Two. For the Amiga, Amstrad GX4000, Atari ST, Commodore and 64, Game Boy, NES, NES ZX yep. Spectrum. Um, this is ZX the... Spectrum again. Oh, it is. I'm oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, it's British. <laughs> right. That it's a British um, machine. You got to say uh, it right. I was going to say, I think oh, you've right. mentioned both that system and that game on this podcast before, Tucker. Maybe. Every time yeah. that Brett says ZX Spectrum, I correct him. I, yeah. I feel I, like I, I, I recognize that. There's something at in this me point, that, like... At this point, I'd be really yeah. mad if, if Brett said it right, because then we wouldn't be able to have our bit for that moment. Sure. So I never mean, change, I'll, I'll never remember. Never change. I'll never remember anyway, so... Never we're, we're change. Uh, don't worry, <laughs> I won't. Really won't. Um, <laughs> oh, hey, man, watch out. You dropped something. I sure it. did, and I caught it before hey, it hit man. the floor. Hey, man, calm down. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry I pronounced it wrong. Jesus. Um, I'm just, right. just going to throw shit for a while. Hang on. No, dude. Uh, uh, so Robo- the RoboCop 2 game for all the co- home consoles was just a side-scrolling platformer, as they all were back then. Um, yeah. RoboCop That's 3 standard. came out in 1991, um, published by Ocean. If, if you know, you know. Um, you know. Uh, features multiple gameplay styles. Um during 92 and 93, other versions consisting of side-scrolling platform gameplay uh, were released for the Atari ST, Commodore 64, Game Gear, and yeah, NES, dude. Sega Genesis, SNES, mm-hmm. and the ZX Spectrum. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Brett, not in the same episode. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, what, you know, okay. You know, know you're being silly now. <laughs> now you're being sure. silly. Sorry, I thought it was. A, I thought we were supposed to do a thing. Uh, the Brett, SNES version Brett, has what many Brett. consider to be extremely difficult gameplay. Yes, Tucker. Brett, it's the ZX Spectrum. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll remember. You that. know what, Brett? You're in America. That's true. Thank you, Stephen. No problem. Uh, we're not. We're not in you. Great Britain. I'll pronounce it how I want. Um, Damn straight. Uh, so with the SNES version, many considered it extremely difficult, um, largely critically panned. Everybody hated it. Um, right. Yeah. Really but, terrible. uh, they, they officially published that one later for the Sega Mega Drive and the Master System. So they're two different versions of RoboCop 3. Mm. Well, and the Master System version was likely just like a a stretched out Game Gear port, which was the style at the time, because only a few countries were even making new Mega Drive games at that point. Right. Well, so there was there's not Mega the original... Drive. Sorry, um, uh, Master System. Master System. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I said Mega Drive, I meant Master System. Got it. Mm. Um. So next chronologically, um, is RoboCop versus Terminator. But we'll come back to that because I think that's the focus of this part of the discussion. Um. 
So we'll skip over that to RoboCop in 2001. We'll skip uh, over the focus of this discussion and talk about other things. Well, yeah, we'll put it at the end so we can talk about it longer. Was that um, a PS2 game? Xbox. Uh, no. So this was bef- so this was a handheld game um, developed by Titus Software for the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance. Wow, this is um, off my radar. I'm really surprised we, there's one on your list that I don't at least have like a faint, like vague idea about. Yeah, so the Game Boy Advance version is pretty much identical to the original RoboCop game, the arcade game. Oh, um, the Data East one? Yes. Fucking A. Um, the Game Boy Color version was released later that year in May 2002. Um, Titus unveiled more screenshots of the GBA version that was expected for release in October 2002, but was ultimately canceled. So that may be why you're not familiar with it. It actually never got released. Well, it's Titus, like... They're doing their best, bless their hearts. <laughs> Sweet summer children. Um, that, that little Fox <laughs> logo, like, come on, man. You look you look like a bargain basement studio, man. Uh, Change that logo. Well, so, but they came back in 2003 with another game called Simply Just Robocop um, for Microsoft. That was PS2. Microsoft Windows, PS2, and Xbox, yes. Okay. Um, they released uh, in 2004... <laughs> It released a GameCube version in Japan. Uh, That's why I never got it. Shucks. Which was called RoboCop Arutanaru Kiki, which translates to RoboCop New Crisis. I like that um, title, though. The player Sorry. controls RoboCop to uncover a sinister plot involving OCP local gangsters dealing a deadly new synthetic drug and a powerful cyborg known only as Mind. So RoboCop 2, then. As a last hope, Robocop must capture, destroy, or arrest hostile characters in a desperate search for clues and evidence. The Xbox version received unfavorable reviews, according to the review aggregation site Metacritic. Ooh. Yikes. Word. Word. And in 2004, we get another game simply titled Robocop. They don't really try to mess with anything there. Um, another side scrolling action. A side scrolling action platformer. Right. Uh, this one is a mobile game. Oh. Uh, yeah. Or I mean, oh. Um, <laughs> it's based on the original movie. Um, oh. I mean, oh. Um, Wasn't there a light gun arcade game at some point? No, I'm thinking of Terminator because there's so fucking many. You are. I'm sorry. Yeah. Continue. That was Terminator. I played Salvation that one a lot. had had one and it's kind of amazing. Mm-hmm. But continue. Yeah, I mean the Terminator one was a classic. I played that one all the time. That one's that the one was Salvation. in heavy rotation. Like oh right. yeah, and the T two one. They have both the T two one and the Salvation one at Tappers. They do. Yeah, dude. Yeah, because I mean, of course, they have all the great arcade games from the nineties. Yeah. Um, uh. So yes. So that one uh, was the the developers. Um, was it Digital Bridges? They made a deal with MGM to produce video games based on their studio's film franchises. Um, apparently, it's good though. It has a got an aggregate score of eight and a half out of ten. That's so, not bad. Well, I mean, that's, that's two thousand four though. Yeah. So keep that in mind. <laughs> Probably <laughs> not available anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we skip ahead ten years. Ten years later, um, a game once again simply titled RoboCop. Word. Um, is released for the it's another Wii, mobile game, right? Oh no, no. Mobile, mobile game. First uh, is a free to play shooter game. It's a tie in to the movie that we that we were talking about today. Oh sweet! I didn't realize Although, that this movie got any video game adaptations. That's pretty rad. Uh, well, this was around the time where like a lot of like if you if you think back to the '90s and the, some a little bit of the early 2000s when they were you know turning every movie under the sun into a video game well that um, was part of the marketing at that point like you had right. a, that was part of the budgeting for the marketing for sure so that came back later mm. in the 2000s 2010s mm. oh that's true yeah 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 and it was just a bunch of mobile games you get they weren't, oh. you know, they weren't developing for I'm, consoles anymore they were just like we're going to promote our game few with and a far phone between you game. had your you had your peter jackson king kong sprinkled in there you did you did every once in a while um but it seemed the way cuz you know phone phone games were or your sega growing. sega developed iron man games which 
Mm. Oh, right. I remember that. Or something. There's something that some people enjoy. So definitely they sure are. And uh, unfortunately, though, it looks like the game is it really is just that straight up cookie cutter promotional game, because all it is is just yeah. like you're playing as RoboCop going through training, fighting holographic enemies and robots in a training simulation. That's lame. I don't want to be um, in a training simulation. I want you to do a dick. Like, yeah. Real hard. Every every RoboCop game should include the option to shoot someone in the dick. If it doesn't, it's not worth playing. I, I mean, modern, agree. modern game. Back in the day, like that's not as easy of a thing to do. Sure. And, but if uh, that new game course, doesn't have a dick shot, like I'm not playing. Then it. what what are we even doing here? Why are we here? Case? Shut it all down, boys. <laughs> shut There's it. No dick all shot. We shut it all down. Down. <laughs> Well, and, and of course, this probably this probably doesn't goes without saying. Uh, it was full of microtransactions and oh barf. Um, oh really? Yeah, a mobile game full of microtransactions. I can't believe you've done this. Are we going to mention? Forbid. Are we going to mention both RoboCop and the Terminator in Mortal Kombat X? Yes, I was about. Or was to it eleven? That. Was it X or eleven? It was X, right? It was eleven. It was eleven. You're right because you had like Freddy in nine and then they brought all the other horror characters in x and then they did sci-fi and shit in 11 yeah 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 because that's when uh, they got the xenomorph and you got terminator and what Robotop. else so 10 10 had jason leatherface leatherface and and the alien right and predator. i don't remember if he was in 10 were were alien and predator predator in 10 or 11 Brad's gonna look up some stuff. Normally, Am Steven I? looks up some stuff, but today it's Brett that's looking I mean, up stuff. Only because yeah. Tucker's telling me to. I wasn't going to otherwise. I got to know. Couldn't care look, less. Look, I'm like the guy in Dirty Harry uh, at the first bank robbery in the first Dirty Harry movie, where he's like, "Did I only fire six shots or only five? And he's like, "Mister, I got to know." That's me. I'm the guy on the ground, like one in Clint Eastwood, to find out if he has an extra bullet or not. That's me right now. Look, a man's got to know his limitations, Tucker. Mister, I got to know. There wasn't a bullet. The guy's okay. He's fine. Dirty Harry sure. didn't shoot him. You guys, spoilers. Not this time. Not this time, no. I killed all his friends, but. <laughs> right, still. right. Yeah. I mean, While eating look. a hot dog. Look, yeah. I don't like the copaganda that Dirty Harry is. But mm -mm. God damn it, if it isn't just like the silliest fun sometimes. He stops that whole bank robbery just eating a chili dog. Like he's he starts the chili dog when he hears about the bank robbery and he can he just he just goes out and shoots them all while he's eating. All right. So this is interesting. Apparently, a lot of people were up in arms because the Xenomorph was in Mortal Kombat 10. Predator was in Mortal Kombat 11. Ooh. How dare you? Um, and people were pissed. They're like, "Why did you not like sure right? Robocop versus Terminator is great, but like this is right here. Why didn't you do it?" It's right, um, right fucking. And they're so. both Fox. It's it's both Fox. How do you fuck that up? It's the same company. You're talking to the same guys. I don't know, man. Fucking maybe that's some. Fuck, maybe that's something to do with the movies coming out at the time. Fucking, I don't know. Look, we could have um, waited for Leatherface. I'm just saying. We totally could have. We could have waited. Not that great um, anyway. He's no Freddy, is what I'm saying. True. Very true. fair. Very fair. Um, and uh, let's see who who are we getting who are we getting for uh, Mortal Kombat One. We're getting uh, Omni Man. And Yo. Later. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, dude. They've like, released they released Omni Man's fatalities. Indie That's, comics. Oh no. Pretty much all of his fatalities are. I don't even the want to see them. I'm like very scared well if you saw the if you saw the series the cartoon you there they, there's three of them that are exactly ripped from the cartoon including yeah. the subway train one. Oh no well i i would <laughs> like to say i would like to have a very hipster moment here right now brett and say that i read the original run as it was being published uh, sure. And when the cartoon came out, I was very happy to see that it was faithful. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like when it yeah. when it comes to Skybound and Robert Kirkman, I was more of a Walking Dead fan. So now, look, I was Invincible. I was uh, Walking Dead too, but there's always time for Invincible. 
sure but i didn't i mean it's i didn't know. look from the outside it just looks like another superhero comic i didn't know Honestly, i didn't i didn't run in the circles to know that it was subversive and really cool if you right. if you don't mind waiting like two years between seasons you don't need to read the comic because it's fucking exactly the same in the right. best way all yeah. right it's kind of perfect cool good enough. perfect adaptation yeah anyway Speaking of adaptations, so back to RoboCop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which does bring us to the reason we're covering this movie. Um, Rob- RoboCop, RoboCop Rogue Cop. City. Um, oh, yeah. That's which, a- based on the trailers and the demos, to your guys' point, I think you can now shoot someone in the dick intentionally. Fuck. Well, of course. Yes. Well, yeah, because it is a shooter. It's a first person shooter. A very slow one, deliberately slow, which I'm well, very curious to see how that works. Sure. No, I mean like exciting. Maybe it was just for the trailer, but it does it did maybe the trailer is played this up, but I remember. Oh, so they make a big deal out of the dick shooting. It's yes. not just something you can do. It's like a it's a whole thing. It's a flourish, if you will. Yes. It goes like it goes into his visor and everything's red and he targets the guy's dick and he just shoots. And him. it says in really big letters, "Dick shot." And the guy from Halo's like, "Dick shot." And then that music plays. So then it turns and then it turns into Doom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, uh, but this so this one is getting a lot of good press. The demo came out. Everybody seemed to really like it. Um. Developed by Taeon and published by Nakon, which like publishers nowadays, I don't recognize half of them anymore. Um, Game is scheduled to be released November 2nd, uh, which is the day before this. Yeah, it will have uh, dropped. It will have just dropped. But who has time to play it, honestly, when Alan Wake 2 exists in this world? That's, That's very true. Um, see, it, see, this Sunday's what are we watching for all your Alan Wake needs? Oh boy, Hell yeah. all of your Remedy Verse nerding out. Um, oh boy, but uh, but yeah, so that comes out on all major consoles uh, yesterday, as of this uh, episode dropping. It's based on the original trilogy of films that, but also includes an all new adventure about the future of law enforcement. Mm. Um, how can and... it be based on the original trilogy when the sequel and the third film are not even based on the original film right because that's, that's one says. of the great examples of a sequel completely ignoring the basic just, premise of the original just, film and even things that happened you yeah. have to completely ignore the most important and integral parts of of the ending to the original to suspend right. your disbelief in the second and third ones. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. they're going to use this video game to retcon the story. Well, please make it a sequel just to the first one, please. Um, Figure that out somehow that doesn't like spit in my face and smack me in the dick. Look, David Gordon Green's probably going to figure it out at some point. No, look, you had your time. <laughs> Halloween 2018 was great. Like, it's fine. Go do something else. Go do some more HBO shows. Okay? He because did. Those he are did. Always he did. He, great. You, know, you know what he did? He did Exodus Believer in Jesus Christ. That movie's gar- hot garbage. I have no, I will never see that. Unless it's for this podcast. I have no desire to see that movie. We ever. were, I was, I was talking about that with the pot and pendulum crew the other night. And Mike Snooney and basically said, I think it's going to be a long time before we see any sequels to exorcist believer. So yeah, look, look, when I saw that trailer, I instantly turned into Will Smith in the mid nineties and was like, Oh hell no. <laughs> Just I mean, like I, that. That is a I thing mean, he no said a lot in the mid nineties. Yes. <laughs> and then I was all for some reason I was like, Welcome to Earth. Another th- and then, well, he, he, does, does, know. he does pronounce the T H on Earth. I will say that. And then that. at some point at some point I was like, I feel like I'm gonna break this damn thing. And but that was it. And then you and then you said, I've got to get me one of these. <laughs> oh, I guess. Uh, and then Jeff say- Goldblum was there and it was magical. Uh, <laughs> You sang about the wild, wild west in front of a giant metal spider. Right. Yes, dude. Oh, I love um, that movie. While too. simultaneously covering that. a Stevie Wonder song. Are we talking about that in 
Why, baby, Steven? We Can have we that. It, please, Wild Wild West is on I'm the so schedule, excited. Tucker. <laughs> Oh my God. Wild uh, Wild West, it continues ooh. to be on the schedule. That is something that our listeners can look forward yeah. to in the coming months. Uh, in Kevin in the Mark year tw- in the year of our Lord 2024, we will cover Wild Wild West. Kevin motherfucking Klein. Which, to be clear, is another movie that Brett has been requesting from the early, early days of this podcast. I don't even care if you hate it, Brett. Like, this is a high five all over because I'm trying to cover the shit out of this movie. Mm. I have a love-hate relationship with it because I'm even more interested now. We'll get into it later, but like I, yes. I watched the original series with my dad because he loves the original series, so Yo. I have a lot of reference for it yes. as an adaptation. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, as an adaptation, it's hot fucking garbage. Yeah. But as uh, yeah, but as a standalone movie, it's just kind of fun. I suppose it is. It's amazing. It's not a uh, the the ideal remake like this movie is. No. No, not at all. But we'll get into that later. Because uh, I, I have to mention, before we move on to the main topic of discussion here, um, Peter Weller reprises his role as RoboCop. Hell yes. He also did in the Mortal Kombat. In the Mortal well. Kombat, yes. So. Yeah. And look, if you want to know how much Tucker loves Peter Weller, check out our episode on so the adventures of Buckaroo Banzai across the 8th dimension. So many of my favorite things have Peter Weller, Weller in them. You've got Buckaroo Banzai. You've got of unknown origin. Hopefully, future. I gotta find a way to fit that into the format. I'll figure something out because we have to watch that movie, boys. And then you've got the Star Trek arcade machine, where he reprises his role as the like the Federation dude that's like from War from the is Calvin coming. Universe. Yeah, he's in the second movie. He's in the. He is, yeah. yeah. He's the main main antagonist of Star Trek oh. Into Darkness. Well, and they put all his best lines in that pinball machine too, dude. Like, I mean, I love that. Thirty percent of that being my favorite pinball machine is just the Peter Weller lines. Honestly, there is a part of me that has decided that twenty twenty four is going to be the year I watch all of Star Trek. Yeah, you said that. You mentioned that I think last week or something, or maybe privately just- this weekend. Right, remember. but like all of that, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dig into all of Star Trek. Well, enjoy uh, a Star Trek reboot part two with Peter Weller and Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah, I that is my least favorite of all the Star Treks. I think I, that's crazy because I kind of like that one, but maybe we'll that get is into a it at wild, wild take. Maybe I, I, maybe we'll I have a feeling that it. next year there's going to be a what are we watching where you and I debate the merits of Star Trek into darkness. We go, we go talk about that. Steven. We gonna talk about it. We gonna talk about it. Real quick. It's kind of also also like this movie, sort of a perfect remake. Oh, that something. is fucking absurd, sir. That's a, that's that? a scorching hot take. That is the wildest of possible takes. Whoa, whoa, Good whoa. lord. <laughs> anyway, can we take See a quick this tangent? episode for reasons? Quick, yes. quick, quick little tangent because I just we didn't get to talk about it on what are we watching last week. Um, so I uh, uh, what's the no, to- totally killer. The the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah so dude. That... We've all watched it now. Right. I was so... gonna say I talked about it on on uh, what are we watching last yeah. week? But yeah, you yeah. didn't because you I weren't here because I wasn't there. Um, but I was going to say, Tucker, did it make your heart happy in that scene when they're scanning across the like you know her mom as a teenager is obsessed with sci fi films. Yeah. And one of them was Buckaroo Banzai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like that's so obscure and i love that that's... it's here and tucker is probably just so happy right now yeah that was tucker's my, that probably my... nerd dizzing his pants right now that was my favorite obscure reference my favorite uh very obvious reference was that she says mom mom mamacita uh-huh just like a dad back to the dad daddy oh like, yeah dude i was like yes because it's right on the line right it's right on the line it's like is this too much of a reference to like make this cringe or is it just perfect to where it floats right by my dad would perfect th- throughout my childhood refer to himself as dad dad daddy O in yeah. reference to back to the future <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah that is totally a thing my father would do 
Oh, yeah, no, man, it's so no good. spooky season is over, but like, go watch it anyway. Fuck off. I have recommended no, it to everyone, and everyone so far has loved it. It definitely gets a recommendation from every member of the Disenfranchised podcast. So if you've yes. not seen Totally Killer, get your ass onto Amazon Prime and check it out. Do it. Hell yeah. Anyway, so let's let's loop back around to the original topic of discussion. Robocop versus the terminator fuck yes yes um so this was the video game was released for several platforms and uh based on the robocop and terminator franchise obviously um in the future human soldiers of john connor's resistance force against the machines are fighting a losing war against skynet and its robot forces Discovering that one of the foundation technologies of Skynet is the cybernetics technology used in the creation of cyborg police officer RoboCop. <gasps> Flo, a resistance soldier, is sent back in time to destroy RoboCop and stop Skynet from being built. However, mm. Skynet learns of the time travel attempts and sends Terminators to stop Flo. In the game, you'll control RoboCop, who may move so across you play the screen. Plays RoboCop in this. He's the jump, entire... fire, exchange weapons. RoboCop starts with the. Sorry. Auto 9, which has unlimited ammo. Um, beginning of the game is you're on a mission from law, for law, law enforcement. Then Robocop meets with Flo, battles some Terminators, uh, then the forces of OCP. Upon discovering one of the Terminators has infiltrated the OCP building, Robocop plugs himself into a console to reprogram the security, only to fall into a trap and be digitized. <gasps> After his body is disassembled and used for building Skynet, Robocop watches Skynet come to power, as with all Terminator stories. No matter what, Skynet comes to power. Oh, uh, as it must. Uh, before using his digitized mind to seize control of an abandoned robotics factory, rebuild himself, and begin to destroy Skynet in the future. Hmm. Pretty cool story. Based on the comic book that's heavy you guys yeah it is based on the comic book uh by frank miller and walt simonson which does everything need... weigh a lot more where you come from i need <laughs> to read that is heavy why do you say that all the time? is that is there a problem with the earth gravitational pull <laughs> yes great scott indeed great <laughs> the greatest of scots there is there being a greater Scott. So I guess with that having been said, who would win between Robocop and the Terminator, Brett? Terminator, right? I mean, though yeah. I don't know. Robocop's clever and depends on which Robocop and kind of depends on the context and the setting. There's something let's I don't say, know if we've ever discussed let's before. Do, let's do the best of both. Let's do the first film Robocop. And the second film, Terminator. Oh, no, wait. So I, I, well, we're thinking this the strongest, though, the most like best in a the best in a battle would be the remake Robocop. Obviously, the remake Robocop would kick original Robocop's ass in a fight. Mm. He's well, more so me, agile. He's let me faster, interject here. He's lean. I don't know if we've ever discussed this on the podcast before. Maybe I've mentioned it in passing, but I hate these discussions. Uh, <laughs> they're they're the most Brett's, asinine nerdiest shit and this Brett's is coming a bad from nerd. an asinine nerd myself um like it's because I, I forget who had the interview about it um but where they were just like look who cares first of all who cares um second of all it's about who's writing it at the time uh really well that's Whoever what i'm needs... saying there's a lot of there's a lot to consider is there though? Yeah, <laughs> no. Right? Like I'm agreeing sometimes. with you, Brad. I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> Look, well, sometimes sure. it's I'm not it's about it's kind not of about loaded what the discussion. right answer is. It's just more about the the fun of trying to parse it out, right? That's true as well. I, mean, I suppose. Maybe that's just not my thing. I'm just not a fan. Might not of be that. your thing. And that's fine. Like yeah, I was I'm a big fan of, like, of the WWF guy. grudge match when I was in high school. So I, I'm particularly oh, yeah, poised to think about this shit. You're not way into speculation. You're kind of the guy who sticks to the, the canon for sure. For sure. Yeah. So like, I, I don't do, I don't do that. Cause I, you know, you know, Hey, does who would win in a fight? Spider-Man or I, 
don't know, who'd he fight in Marvel vs. DC? I forget. Superboy. Superboy. Superboy, yeah. So who would win in that fight? Or the I don't Hulk, know. Go... And he also fought Superman. So go, go read the comic and there's your answer. For. Like, I just, you know. Well, in, I mean, in that Batman. fight, Marvel kind of like stacked their deck. Like they had two X Men and Spider Man. And then you know. he became Spider Boy in the Amalgam universe with Dark Claw. Oh, you mean the Amalgam? No, dude, Amalgam, dude. No, I know there was a, there was a guy who used to come into my my comic book shop and ask for the Amalgam. Oh, Yo, man, you got any of that Amalgam? So I've always pronounced it that way, just kind of as a as a way to to riff on that guy. I loved the ammo game. So did I. I thought it was some really fun. It was cool fun. Stuff. It's fucking rad, dude. One of my one of my low key favorite books, Magneto Magneto and the Mag uh, and the Magnet Men. I really liked that comic. I thought that was. Really I also fun. liked the the doc. I liked Doctor Strange Fate. I mm. thought that was really clever too. Mm. Yeah. Dark Claw was fun, but uh, no. sure the best i mean it was i think the best conceptually but it wasn't the best written of all of those that makes yeah i agree yeah, yeah the captain america superman uh what super soldier there you go super soldier yeah there it were some the, fun books it, uh, there. lex luther agent of shield or sorry, director of shield wasn't Lex Luthor the director of Shield? Oh, wait, somebody who was Shield? Who was Bruce that? Wayne was Shield. Bruce, Bruce Wayne, Wayne, yes, that's right. Bruce Wayne, Agent of he Shield. Died. That's what it was. Yes. That's what it was. Yeah. Good memory, Tucker. That's fun. Thank you. Marvel was, versus was, DC. That was that was that was a... during my direct edition days, Stephen. I didn't miss an issue. Oh, I I bought all of those, and my parents like hid several of them from me because they, you know, comic books are the devil. Uh, but I. I found them and took them back and I have, I think every issue of that. Uh, I don't have all the amalgams sadly, oh. but I do have uh, the entire. It's got to be a trade, run. right? That's there still has in print? to be there. I, no, I don't think it's still in print, but there has to be Fuck a trade. That. There. Well, I mean, it's getting, it's getting those guys to like come to an agreement on shit. And that's damn near impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, digitally, sure. Like, I don't expect it to be released on the digital platforms, but, like, they've had the print deals in place for a long time. You know, 30, 40 fucking years. It looks like you can get it for 32 bucks on eBay. Nailed it. There you go. I'm getting it. I know where my next 32 bucks is going. But I don't think it's still in print. Let me... I had um... all the... I had all the trading cards. DC versus Marvel, yeah, it's not in print anymore. It's on Amazon for like eighty six dollars, so it's definitely not in print. Anymore. Yeah, I don't care about that. I want the amalgam. Oh, see, yeah. yeah, see, I don't know if the amalgam is available there. Yeah, but you know who's not in the amalgam universe? Robo Terminator. Oh wait, Robo maybe Terminator. he is. Uh, so find the comics. Cop. Find the comics, Steven. Are they, are they are they anywhere to be found on eBay and or Amazon? Uh the Robocop versus Terminator comics? Yeah, yeah. dude. Let me let me You said that was a Frank Miller joint, right? It was, yeah. Absolutely. It was in Rolt Simonson. So like I think he drew it too. Did he at least do some covers? I feel like I've seen some covers and they were. He very might have done the covers, but Walt Simonson actually did the actual art in the book. Maybe um, I'm just thinking of the Robocop three. The unproduced screenplay that he did, because I think he did the art on that for sure. Okay. Oh God. Yeah. It, that is also another thing that is out of print right now. So on Amazon, you can get the hardcover of RoboCop versus Terminator for eighty dollars, or mean, the trade paperback for two hundred and ninety-five. Oh, Jesus Christ! Right now, for that for that hardcover being eighty bucks, that's not bad that's not terrible it's something it's... that you really like like that's a hard cover so it's gonna keep yeah like you're gonna have that it's like buying mm -hmm. a good pair of shoes for a hundred dollars versus like a shitty pair of shoes for 20 bucks like you can yeah. also get it on ebay for close to 50 so the, the so that bad. is also another option there you go and individual in... issues range anywhere from five to twelve dollars from what i'm or seeing here. you could probably get it from the library also true yeah, go read it. Check it out. See if it's similar to the storyline of the video know. game. I'm and I will try to read it before if slash if we try to do RoboCop 3. Sweet. Sweet. 
Cool. Well, you, That's enough for this corner. Right on. Really what what corner. what final thoughts do we have about the RoboCops? Look, I feel like all we've talked about is my thoughts on it because I think it's so rad. We've talked about our thoughts. Neither one of us really yeah, cared for it much. Yeah, I was yeah, going to say, no. Brett and I kind of didn't care for it. I thought it was fine. Brett, it's I fine. think, thought maybe a little less so. There's... Yeah. No, well, I, like, uh, spoiler, I, right in the middle. Like, my no, it's right down the middle. Like, big I, ditto. Yeah. Big ditto. Yeah. yeah. So. And that's, I will say that that's fair because I get the underwhelming response to this movie. I don't get the people on Letterboxd that give it half a star or, like, one star. I'm like, did we watch the same fucking movie? And, like, do right. you understand, like, it's... how remakes work at all? Letterbox isn't any better than any other social media platform, in my opinion. I, just, I start reading reviews of movies that I like, and it just makes me angry. So I just don't do it anymore. Because, look, to me, this this may not be a movie that some people like, but it's it's not a bad movie. Like, you can't say that this is a bad movie. I would not say it's a bad movie. I would no. say it's an underwhelming movie, but it's not a bad movie. And no. I get that. For me, it's not, but I understand your reasons why. And I think that's... right. Not because of anything that the film is doing, but I think it's because of the way that we look at films and the way that we look at remakes. Like, I don't right. expect the same things out of a remake as, as you do, Stephen. Sure. And but, we've just, but like, I mean, that's what we've found out this whole month, like talking about these remakes, right. you know? Well, and I think, again, like, if you're going to remake a movie, why pick like a perfect movie to remake? Pick a shitty movie to remake look, and try yo, to remake it better. I will, look, I will stand with you and say that this did not need a remake. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, completely unnecessary. Never in a million years. I'm not going to say never in a million years because, you know, political climate changes, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Stuff happens in the world and in society. And maybe there would be one day where it would be like, you know what? Maybe we should remake RoboCop. But 2014 wasn't exactly a time where we needed a RoboCop remake. But we got one. And I think it's kind of great. But like I say, I get, I get where it may not be up your guys' alley. And I mean, Sony was certainly working on a sequel to this movie, but I think the oh, underwhelming box office so kind of bad. like shifted their shifted their uh, mm. their priorities a little bit. Mm. So I want it so bad. We didn't actually get it. Let's let's look, take a just look at the a, box office. Just a screenplay. Hey, anybody out oh, there yeah. listening, if you have somehow access to any sort of screenplay or treatment to the sequel to this movie. Hook a brother up because I'll see what I can find for you, Tucker. Woof. Some sometimes you can stumble and, on those things. And you know, a lot of movies like this, like stuff like Amazing Spider Man Two, where I like it and nobody else does. Like the more I watch it, the more I'm like, oh, that's why nobody likes it. I get that, and now I don't like it. Right. But with the Robocop remake, every time I watch it, I like it more. Like this time that I watched it, I couldn't believe how much I liked it. I was going to say, you were kind of quietly raving ah, about it in the group like I've chat. Always, every time I've watched it, I've liked it. But I think every time I watch it, I like it more. Mm-hmm. And But I still do, like I say, understand why other people don't like it. But like when I'm hyper-focused on them, those things that I enjoy, I find like the nuances of it. And it makes it even better for me. This is right. your Popeye. Yeah. It kind of is. It kind of is. I fucking love this movie. Unabashedly love this movie. Right on. Not good for you, man. No, I'm I'm yeah. glad you like it. I am. I I it your love for it makes me wish I liked it more, to be honest. I don't think that it's a good double feature with the original. No. Because these are two completely different headspaces. Like it, absolutely. They're trying to do two like, very different no. things. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I would not, no. Though, I would watch Total Recall and RoboCop as a double feature. The like the remakes the of both? That, that remake of Total Recall, I couldn't even, I didn't even sit through that. because I, got I saw that forward. in the fucking theater. I am so sorry. Yeah, me too. Uh, but no, RoboCop, the uh, the the remake of RoboCop uh, comes into theaters on February 12th, 2014. Of course, February, a notoriously great time for movies that the studio thinks are going to perform well. I'm kidding, of course. That is where he released the Drek. Uh, but um, in its second weekend, number one at the box office is a little movie called The Lego Movie. 
which uh, so far has grossed $130 million in just two weeks. Not my thing, uh, but I will say it's really good. I like the Lego movie. The sequel, not so good. Uh, of it's course, not, future it's episode of this me. podcast, the Lego Ninjago movie. We will talk about it. It's not for me, but when I watched it, I was like, this, I get why people are way into this. Yeah, it's fun. It's a very fun and movie. The same goes for the Lego Batman movie. I thought that one was also very fun. That may be my favorite of the Lego franchise. It's it's exhausting, Stephen. Like I have to I have to pause it after about twenty minutes and just like take a breath. I I get it. And like digest everything that's just been thrown at me. Like <laughs> it's it's a lot. I agree. All it's the, like all a, those it's a Lego machine movies gun of a movie and it's like Hold on, let me calm down. I'd rather watch it on TV so those commercials so I could like lay down and process. <laughs> <laughs> it it does it does something that no other Batman movie really does well, which is that it it brings in Robin in a way that makes Robin feel necessary and not perfunctory. While still pointing out why every other interpretation of him seems unnecessary and quite frankly irresponsible. Correct. Uh, in second place, new this week is about last night, the Kevin Hart film. Uh, in third place, we get RoboCop, which opens to hey. uh, uh, a total of twenty six point six million dollars. Again, it opens on a Wednesday, so this is the the weekend box office. Yeah, it grosses twenty one point eight seven million in its opening weekend and twenty six point six total across the long weekend. Uh, in fourth place, the George Clooney film The Monuments Men. Wait, what's the budget on RoboCop? Did you say the Robo- budget? I have not yet. The budget is, uh, it looks like $120 million. Ooh, uh, shit. It, across its entire theatrical run in the U.S., it earns $58.6 no. domestic, which is why it does not get the sequel they are planning. Internationally, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I didn't mean to make you jump the gun there, Steven. No, no, no. You're but fine. It's just like when you said it made like 20 million on the early weekend and then like another 20 million on the weekend. I was like, oh, maybe this did well. And I just didn't realize that. And no, it ooh. like it, it earns about ha- over half of its domestic gross in its opening weekend, which is not a good sign. It does, however, internationally earn another 184.4 million. I mean, for- but still, that's. Yeah, you're recouping costs, and that's about it. Yeah, like, I mean, that. world worldwide, you're looking at about two forty three million worldwide, I which mean, is just not it's not great if you're wanting to make shame. this into a franchise. And again, we run into this shit all the time on this podcast. Like, it makes money, it just doesn't make enough money to perpetuate the franchise. Again, that's a kind of a recurring theme for us here. And I honestly think with with this film, it's a shame it didn't get a sequel because I think everything that most people did not like about it, I think as well as this film is done, it kind of proves that if we had the same team on it, right, that it would have turned, it would have evolved into a franchise that everybody could get behind. Potentially, yeah. I mean, we didn't talk about the director, um, Jose Padilla. He's a uh, a Brazilian director um, who is, again, largely known for Brazilian films. I think this is his first American film. Just like um, your Hoven. Right. With Robocop. He's, d- he's directed a lot. Uh, well, Verhoeven had directed one other movie prior to Robocop. What was it? Flesh Plus Well, I Blood. mean, was that an American film? It was. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. then, all right. He okay. directed a number of, of films in, in the Netherlands, but that was his Flesh Plus yeah, Blood was his first American film. I assume uh, that I just always thought that Robocop was kind of like his big break in America. It was his, it was his big break, but it was not his first American film. Oh, gotcha. Um, but I mean, uh, Jose Padilla, this is, I think, his first and maybe only American film. Uh, he's directed some uh, a couple episodes of Narcos, which, you know. Oh the Netflix series that a lot of us know people like that show. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is his first and maybe only American film that he's directed. Um, I will say the one thing that 
does not blow my mind in this film are the action sequences. I don't think they're bad, but they're just fine. Whereas I think the rest of this movie for me really hits it out of the park. The action sequences are just like, oh, this is serviceable. This the works. reliance on CGI for the action sequences takes a lot out of it for me. I don't. I don't think the CGI looks bad. I think the CGI is fine. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great. Like it's not. It's not what I want it to be. For me, it's not distracting. Is what I'll say. It's not Whereas, Deep Blue Sea distracting, which I love Deep Blue Sea, by the well, way. Well, no, what this is thing. Deep Blue Sea distracting? But no, it, I don't. I wouldn't say it's that distracting, but it's Van still Helsing. like. <laughs> love that movie too. BT does. No, love that movie touche. too. See our previous episode on uh, on Van Helsing with our friend Hope Lickner. We might um, need to revisit that because I love it so much. I at mean, some look, point. I would just say we would need to have Hope back for that. Absolutely. Fuck yeah, dude. Revisit it I, all the way. I look, I just, I just love having hope on. She's a lot of fun. I just um, love that movie and I'm willing to do anything to talk about it. We can, maybe we can do a month sometime in 2024. We can do a month of episodes where we've already covered the, like a kind of a revisited disenfranchised revisited month. Maybe yeah, next, straight up. Next maybe year, dude. Time. Straight it's maybe. our fifth like, next. I mean, next year is like, this is season four. After September, it'll be season five. So maybe we do that like in November or something. What if we do it like the 200th episode, right? Disenfranchised year one. Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah, dude. I don't know. Shoot us an email. Disenfranchpod at gmail.com. Let us know what you think of that idea. Yeah, and tell us what episodes you want us to do or what movies you want us to revisit outside of Van Helsing because we're definitely fucking doing that one. And The Rocketeer. So you got two to pick. And what uh, what what <laughs> guest you would like to have us uh, have have on for those episodes too? If you you have yeah. some fan favorite guests that you'd like to have revisit, let us know. Uh, fifth place is Endless Love, a movie I know nothing about. Uh, uh. And then rounding out the top ten, we have Ride Along, Winter's Tale, Frozen, Lone Survivor. And that awkward moment, I do want to shout out number twelve and number fourteen because those are future ups. Excuse me, future episodes of this podcast, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit at number 12 and Vampire Academy. Wait, was that the top number Cruise 14? One? No, that was that no, was the Tom Chris Cruise Pine never one. Been. Yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. How did I fuck that up? And Vampire Academy, let's cover that because I have thoughts because it's on the list, man. That's a movie I have seen more times than I ever fucking wanted to. <laughs> i i can't wait to hear why you can thank our mutual friend julie for that oh that tracks okay yeah that tracks all right holy woof that movie it's um so bad. but yeah um oh god i didn't look up i didn't actually put in this movie for a tomatometer score so give me, give me you've two done seconds this. here Steven. i can't believe i've done this either what i slipping, man. i hate myself for doing You're off this. your game i you know what i am yeah, and that's okay. I'm just pointing not out. My, not my not my best that's day. Okay. I will say that not my best day. You know what, Steven? It's just a podcast. If if people listen to us through all the 158 episodes that we've made so far, then they're here for you not bringing it sometimes, you know. <laughs> Same uh, with the all toma- of us, you know. We have the tomatometer score on this one is a 49%. I don't think that's v- fair. The critics consent that, which is also the audience score. Rarely yeah, those two match up. Yeah, perfectly matched. Uh, critics consensus, while it is far better than it could have been, Jose Padilla's RoboCop remake fails to offer a significant improvement over the original. Uh, I would agree. The meta score uh, is 52 based on mixed or average reviews from 41 critics. And the letterbox score on this one is going to be a th- or two point three. Brett out yeah, of I don't think that's fair. Brett out of five stars. How are you ranking 2014's RoboCop? Yeah, man, listing off all of those ratings, it really is just like middle of the road mm-hmm. vanilla. Yeah nothing yep. else movie because i also gave it a 2.5 as hey. did i hey. brett as did i so 2.5 you know 2. from 5 you 2.5 from me it's halfway to five it's fine yeah. it's fine is what it's it is it's fine. perfectly okay right it's perfectly serviceable okay. film 
Tucker, how did you rank this movie? Now, I feel a little differently. For me, this is a three and a half star movie. It's a 3.5. All right. So let's do. So that is how we come down on Robert Cop, Robocop from the year of our Lord 2014. That is how we come down on it. Uh, What do you think about Robocop? Koppenstein. 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 Let us know what the you think back? about RoboCop 2014. You can hit us up on all of the social medias. We are at Disenfranch Pod on Instagram, Letterboxd, Blue Sky, and uh, Facebook. We are no longer on Twitter because I'm just I've just decided no. Oh, dude, I love that. I've, Hell I've yeah. Done, I've just decided no. Twitter's been um, some old bullshit forever. So like I'm yeah. never off of it. So I'm going to, um, as of uh, today, as of the recording of this episode, I will post the so long and thanks for all the fish uh, screenshot from Hitch- previous episode, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. With a link to that episode? Potentially. And uh, let everyone know that we are moving on to Bluer Skies. And I will uh, keep putting everything on Blue Sky rather than on Twitter. So there is that. Um but uh, you can also and rate and review page. this podcast on uh, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We prefer five stars, please, and thank you. And if you do leave us a five-star rating and review, I'm just going to say it now. We'll read your review here on this podcast. So you'll be able but to you hear know, your words parroted back to you. If you leave us a four and a half stars, uh, while it's not as good for us with the algorithm, we will admire your integrity. Right, but we won't read it on the podcast. So you know. No, no, no. I'll read it Absolutely. to myself at night right. as I cry myself to sleep. But outside of that, no. I read it. Up. Not read it on the air. Correct. You can shoot us an email at disenfranchpod at gmail.com. Let us know what failed franchise starters you would like to see us cover in 2024. And uh, let us know how we're doing. Like, seriously, just we, we like to know what you think about what, what we're doing here. Um, I'm your host, Stephen Foxworthy. You can follow me on, uh, oh no, wait, before I do that, patreon.com slash disenfranch pod. You can find, uh, God for five bucks a month. You can get hours, days. I dare say days. literally days We've of, it. of bonus days. content, including our weekly show. What are we watching? Which we have already invoked on this podcast. Um, episodes of unenfranchised. Another thing that we have invoked on this podcast. Um, Oops, all Christianity corner. Oops, all video game corner. Two things we have also invoked on this video game cor- on this episode. God, I can't talk. Um, full episodes of those all behind the paywall, plus so much more. There's so much content behind that paywall. Again, all yours to access for just five bucks a month. Disin- or uh, patreon.com slash disenfranch pod. Please check that out. And if you want to drop us five bucks, we promise it will be worth your while. And so there's, you don't, like I believe say, us, free trial. Yeah, there is like a free I trial. Say, there's a seven day free trial. Hop on the trial. Look, if like maybe you have nothing to do for a week, you hop on that trial. Like you're never going to get bored. Right. There's, there's, there's so I, much sorry, stuff I back there for you. I can't stop sneezing, you guys. Jesus Christ. I can't stop sneezing. I'm dying. <laughs> Please continue. There is there's so much stuff there behind that paywall that you will not there there is not a dull moment for you back there. So there's stuff that Brett and I did before Tucker joined. There's stuff that that Tucker has joined on. In fact, spearheading the the what are we watching uh, segment. Yeah, that's my idea. That's that's your baby. Pretty good idea. That's why they hired me, man. Because I'm an idea man. You're an idea man. Uh, so yeah, check all that out. Patreon.com slash disenfranch pod. I'm your host, Stephen Fox, where you can find me on, uh, blue sky, Instagram, letterboxd and Facebook at chewy walrus. Brett, where can we find you on the socials these days? They can't find you on Facebook at chewy walrus. You don't want them to do that. Oh yeah. Um, no, don't find me on Facebook at all. Thank you for reminding me. Sorry. I've had one too many beverages tonight. I apologize. You're welcome. I am on Instagram, uh, letterboxd and blue ski at uh, sus underscore warlock. Well, su- just sus warlock. No underscore on blue sky. Right. Yeah. Blue, blue ski doesn't like what underscores you, for some reason. What's your weekly review of blue ski, Brett? You've been telling us about it. You said it's kind of like, really chill because there's not that many people and there's not as still many pretty much there. the same there's a little bit more content because i found a couple more people to follow yeah um yeah. and really you kind of have to like keep looking for people and like hoping they show up because uh there's no real way to see who's popping up on blue sky these days 
No, and some people you'll find, um, and then they'll be like, yeah, they signed up back when Bluesky started, and they haven't right. posted in months. Uh, right, like, thread, yeah. like all of Threads. Yeah. Right. I abandoned Threads for that reason. Yeah, I, I abandoned Threads almost immediately. Everybody I did agree. immediately. Like, it had most of its most of its activity within the first week of Look, existing. It was fun for nothing. 12 hours. It legitimately, yeah. Tucker, where can we find you on the socials? Well, if you could understand what I'm saying, because unbeknownst to the listeners at home, because I've been muting my mic, I've been straight up sneezing my dick off <laughs> for like the last 10 <laughs> minutes. R.I.P. your dick, I guess. Oh, man. Like, and now I just sound like I'm all nose right now. Uh, so I apologize for that. Hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. I am on the YouTubes. And on the Instagrams at ice nine oh nine. That's I C E N I N E. The number zero and the number nine. Classy, very classy. Uh, also, uh, we got some tuck mugs business going on. We're slowing down the posts, um, but only briefly. Only briefly. We will be returning very soon. Uh, our restructuring of the Tuck Mugs staff has gone very well, and I think we're ready to kind of output some, some, some content. Really, and soon. I would like to We've say that I was it out. I was in your presence over the weekend when you purchased a new mug that I'm sure will be featured on I Tuck did. Mugs at some point. At some point, but let me tell you, Stephen, uh, the fact is I was not prepared to bring a mug home in the way that mm. I was traveling home. So that mug is right now. At my parents' house. I I wondered if that might not be the 760 case. 760 is... miles away. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. So is my poster because I was like, I really don't want to roll this. I'd rather just put it flat in the back of my car when I come at Christmas. Because I do Fair not enough. want to roll this. Because it's flat as fuck already. Right. I do not want to roll it. Mine is still uh, rolled. I need to take mine out of its out of its cardboard yeah, sleeve. Put some bricks on that shit, man. Flat Hell yeah. couch. I don't, I don't know if you'll be doing this, Tucker, but I will be purchasing an Oh Dear Diner mug off of the Remedy store very soon, along with a bag of Bright Falls Blend coffee. Mm. What now? I didn't know there was a coffee, coffee, coffee. Yeah, just check out the Remedy store. Oh, it's on. The, oh, good. It's not like I don't have to go to some like weird coffee startup. Right, no gimmicky thing. Although apparently the Obadir Diner coffee mug is sold out right now. Right now, but I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Be all right. Well, that, my friends, is our episode on 2014's Robocop. We hope you have enjoyed it. Um this has been the Disenfranchised Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Foxworthy, for my co host, Brett Wright and Tucker. Until next time, dead or alive, you're coming with us. Uh.